I know of a lot of groups out there that are looking at developing different metrics, and we see it as a really, really cool leap forward that's probably going to happen in the next five to 10 years. So how are you going to actually understand the new paradigm, though, right? And how are you going to achieve the, 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 the goals, right, on the previous slide? We have to really get back, like Rick Clark, guy who I've really grown to enjoy listening to, you have to really get to know Mother Nature, right? And you have to maintain some humility when in dealing with Mother Nature. You have to really get back to observation and then develop, and last but not least, develop a cooperative relationship with nature instead of perhaps one that may be slightly antagonistic or exploitive. You know, in the 20 plus years that I've been involved professionally in crop management, I've seen more often than not that the cooperation with nature wins out over, you know, extractive sort of approaches, whether that be in the short term or the long term, one way or another, it's, it, it, you know, nature kind of always has her say. And so, you know, that's why I think regenerative agriculture was developed because a lot of folks realize that and want to move on. So like we talked about last week, the 10 fundamentals of nature, pretty key component to really understanding and unlocking sap tests, soil analysis methods, understanding how to actually access the new paradigm. So I don't really want to go in into detail with the 10 fundamentals again, because we spent a whole session last week on it. But again, we have to really circle back to, this is a key component of understanding how to use SAP testing technology. And so when we when we look at the, the 10 fundamentals of nature, this is the way that nature is actually operating, right? So nature is operating through those 10 principles all the way, all the time. And so the more that we, operate in the old paradigm, the less we're operating in the new one, right? And then you also have to kind of come back to that technical definition that we've that we've gone over a few times is of autotroph, right? So plants being able to produce their own biofertilizers naturally when under the correct environmental conditions. And we all know this to be true because there's plenty of plants that exist in nature that have no fertilization, right? And so, you know, how can plant, you know, nature grow plants constantly with no predation, right? Or very little predation over the long term. You know, we have to really get back to fundamentals of nature, understand those, utilize those in our day-to-day -day, day -day operating protocols, and then and then start to unpack and access a new paradigm through that, that method. So fundamentally and operationally, how do we do this? So the first thing, you know, we strengthen the ability to respond to stress, right? And so this is a key component that we've been discussing over the, the course of the last five weeks. Second, we respond to those micro, micro shocks on an on-farm system through microbes, buffering, uh, fertilize, fertilization, weather, you know, weather events, fortification, trying to hold water in the soil, et cetera. And then last but not least, we shrink the gap from ideal to existing in, in a lot of different ways on the farm. So equipment, inputs, uh, personnel, knowledge, education, you know, the list just goes on and on. You start with saying, okay, well, what would be optimal, right? If we're making X amount of dollars, we've got X amount of acres, we're producing X amount of crops. And then you, sh and you say where you are today and start to shrink that gap. So like we've discussed already, the three pillars of the new, new paradigm being plant detoxification, mineral balancing, and biological augmentation, right? And at the heart of each one of those is carbon fertilization, right? So in other words, carbon fertilization can accomplish each one of these, but carbon fertilization is not the only way to accomplish each one of these. Every, practically every recommendation that comes out of Apical through other agronomists or to our customers themselves, almost all of them have a, some form of carbon in the recommendation. Just a key framework that helps you to access the new paradigm. And so by understanding how to do mineral balancing through sap analysis and precision soil analysis, you're doing the plant detoxification process as well through, through supplementation. And last but not least, you're biologically augmenting both the microbes in the soil, but also the plant itself, right? And so this is, there's, you know, sort of a twofold concept in each direction for each one of these. And so like we've been sort of alluding to, 
the entire you know webinar series here nutrient stress precedes plant stress vulnerability right so start with nutrient stress then you have essentially a stressed plant and then after the plant is actually stressed then you get insects disease so on so that that cascade you know and understanding that allows you to push back on it preemptively right and so you know we all know this to be true because there's a great many you know pesticide and you know, integrated pest management protocols that focus on reducing stress reducing plant vulnerability you know fortify fortification of plants preemptively and so on but when we start to talk about it those sorts of concepts we can look at them in both a micro scale you know intracellularly but also on a macro scale from full farm when we look at them on a cellular level that's what actually leads to the longer term macro scale farm imbalances right so what happens is you know a multitude of nutrient imbalances you know first of all they denature the proteins they they stop sugar assimilation their cellular dehydration cell wall compromise and so forth and the plant switches from creating new cells to either maintaining cells and maintaining its current growth patterns with no new growth and then subsequently contributes to long-term decay and that decay and decline is limited by the amount of carbon that the plant can access in relation to the growing habitat so in other words if your plant has access to abundant carbon through the entire life cycle of its existence it's going to have much more ability to respond to this to each one of these stresses as well as be able to upregulate defense molecules that that respond to those stresses but that said each one of those individual stress points can be limited through proper nutrition and reinforced through improper nutrition so in other words the more that we access the new paradigm through mineral balancing biological augmentation and plant detoxification you push back on the improper nutrition that reinforces the the nature of the the protein limitation cellular dehydration cell wall compromise etc cetera, etc cetera. so again you know people say that you have to hit home a certain concept or topics you know seven times for it actually to sink in and so i'm going to you know keep circling back on a couple of these infographics where we look at the the loss of nutritional capability and therefore crop productivity capability due to soil conditions plant physiology and your loss of accessing the mass balance of nutrients via biological selective root uptake right so every crop every good crop management book kind of talks about you know physical mineral and biological influences of both the soil and the plant super fundamental to agronomy but then actually taking that concept one step further, looking inside the cell and watching how the, how the plant is limiting its own growth habitat because it can't access proper nutrition. So the plant says, I can't access X, Y, and Z nutrient. Now I need to downregulate the other, these other nutrients from going into the plant because I've already got too much of X, Y, or Z, or I can't access another one. And as it starts to limit its own behavior, next thing you know, it's limiting your own productivity for your farm. Carbon is king. Thanks again very much and look forward to seeing you all next week. Take care.